And let's talk about corruption. So we're just about two months into 2020. Already you know the cases of corruption that we've already had to deal with. It makes many of us wonder, will corruption ever go away? Well, there's a quote that says, corruption is not a simple one-sided activity. Victims can't inadvertently become collaborators in normalizing corruption. Think about this. Haven't we already normalized it? Well, the originator of that quote joins me here in the studio, Dr. Christopher Yankee. He is an assistant professor of international business at the University of South Carolina. Dr. Yankee, you're welcome. Thanks very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Is it your first time in Ghana? It is, actually. Oh, yeah. How do you find it? Uh, well, warm so far, <laughs> but very nice. I only came in last night. We have okay. a, a week ahead of us, so I'm looking okay. forward to seeing it. You'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about corruption. Uh, you talk about the fact that corruption is not a one-sided um, affair mm -hmm. and that everybody else can end up helping to normalize it. Yeah. I get the feeling that we're already there. Yeah, well, that's, a, that's an interesting conversation, although every time note that once corruption comes up, we're talking about it as something that's wrong, mm -hmm. right? So I think we need to separate normalization from something that we take for granted and we no longer consider to okay. be wrong, okay. as opposed to something that we understand to be wrong but is with us pervasively. Mm -hmm. Those are two, two different things. Can I give you an example, one yeah. that I'm a little bit concerned about that I think you'll, you'll, uh, you'll agree with. Mm -hmm. So we have some very good data uh, on Ghana specifically, as lots of lots of other countries. Um, there's some good data sources out there, survey data. Uh, many of your viewers will be familiar with Transparency International yeah. as a leading organization. Yeah. They so have in a, Ghana, their reps in Ghana is the Ghana Integrity Initiative, exactly. the GII. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, that organization every year does a corruption perception index, yeah. right? They do it for countries around the world. Mm -hmm. We also have a really well done survey called the Afrobarometer, mm -hmm. which is not done every year, uh, but uh, but every every uh, so often. The latest version of the Afrobarometer survey was released in 2019. So speaking to your question of are we normalized or not, yeah. let me give you a statistic. You can tell me how you feel about this. Mm -hmm. So the Afrobarometer survey asks uh, Ghanaians, it's a nationally representative sample, so how corrupt do you think these different types of people are, right? It starts from the top down, president, yeah. parliament, national government, local government, it police. goes into police is yeah. a big one, uh, what religious leaders, traditional leaders, business executives, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And they can say they're not corrupt at all, they're corrupt a little bit, or most of them are corrupt or all of them are mm. corrupt. Okay, and across every single uh, type of official that's mm. asked, Ghanaians in the 18 to 25 age group are statistically significantly less likely to see a corruption problem. Okay. Right? And this difference isn't small. Mm. Right? If you look at the raw data, it's about a 15 to 25 percent mm -hmm. lower chance of a young Ghanaian saying we have a problem with this type of, of a person compared to, uh, to an older Ghanaian. So we're there, like I Well, said. so that's it. Look, I, I haven't done enough uh, work on this. I can't explain why they're saying it, but certainly it raises a red flag, mm. right, around whether it is the case that 18 to 25-year-olds who have grown up in a system like this, right, are now sort of conditioned to yeah. it, normalized it. They see it as a normal part of their environment, mm. right, and they no longer see it as, as, as misconduct, uh, mm. right? But that's the conversation I, I think we're it, That's a conversation that we can have, I mean, m much later because mm. it requires a lot more time, but I th I think that's also because they, they'll tell you that there are various shades mm. of it, if you look at So yeah. in, in the Ghanaian society, and I'll have you tell us how this compares, the data you have mm. compares to what happens in the U.S., for yeah. example. But if you take here in Ghana, there are certain parts of our culture mm. that pe people have complained allows or makes corruption bits and pieces of that very easy. So, for example, we like to give gifts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if someone, at the end of the year, someone, you know, packages something and gives it to you, or you do something for someone and they feel like, I owe you sure. uh, an appreciation. Mm -hmm. And people have complained that these are some of the things that actually feed into corruption. Yeah. I'm interested to find out how you, based on what you have read about Ghana, compares to the culture. Um, in the U.S. Yeah, well, let me be careful to, to say that as the first time in Ghana, I'm, mm. I'm not a, Ghana, a, a right. Ghana expert. That's so why I said to compare it with the details you have from at least in Transparency International. Uh, absolutely. Mm. So what we certainly understand is that this gray area of what is allowed and not allowed, what's okay and not okay, mm. this is a problem that's shared worldwide, right? So I'm, I'm not in Ghana today be, or this week because, you know, Ghana uniquely has some sort of problem, yeah. right? We all understand that this is a global problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
we can talk about uh, all kinds of examples from the United States, from, from, from lots of other places. So I'm here this week uh, to sort of lead a conversation that's in partnership uh, with the Youth Bridge Foundation mm -hmm. uh, and also the Ghana Anti-Corruption Coalition. We've got a, a public uh, event uh, tomorrow uh, yeah. that, uh, that I hope uh, many will, will come and attend and help us with this conversation. So we're here because we see Ghana as an active location where we can really unpack these issues not because we understand exactly what's happening in, in, in Ghana yet. So where is that difference, right? Where is that line between these gifts are okay, those gifts are not okay, right? I think, uh, I think it makes sense to largely bring this to the population and ask them themselves, right? right? What's okay, what's not okay? So how is this conversation that you're having with uh, Youth Bridge and Anti-Corruption uh, co Coalition going mm -hmm. to look like exactly? Give us a mental picture. Yeah, so I've been asked to do a public lecture tomorrow. We're organizing it around several sort of key questions. One is the uh, relates directly to the to the quotation, corruption. right? To demystify the corruption, we have to get away from this us versus them sort of mentality. That there's a set of corrupt actors out there, mm -hmm. and those people are doing something wrong. Whereas we're back here, and we're sort of separate from that. Mm. And a large part of what I'm going to talk about tomorrow wants to sort of break down that us versus them, them. barrier. So what I like to do is I like to ask people whether they think that corruption is a moral problem or a strategic problem, <laughs> right? That's an interesting topic. And the answers to those differ very much, right? So if we're talking about corrupt government officials, corrupt police, clearly it's them, right? And they're yeah. immoral for the yeah. things that they're doing. Yeah. Well, okay, that's fine, but let's take another example from the Afrobarometer uh, and the Transparency International data, right? The number one most common interaction that Ghanaians have with yeah. corruption mm -hmm. is through their interactions with the police. Right. Okay. Right. So now if I ask you, you get pulled over at a traffic stop, right? Are the police immoral for asking for a bribe? Most of us would say yes. <laughs> okay. But then I'm going to ask you if you actually pay for it. Yeah. Right. Do yeah. you give cash? Right. And, and most of us probably yeah. do. Yeah. And you say, yeah. okay, well, why did you do that? Are you being immoral for doing that? Mm -hmm. and most of us are going to have a strategic explanation, explanation. for that. There's a cost-benefit analysis yeah. for why yeah. I do it. You're immoral mm -hmm. for asking for <laughs> it or for accepting it, nothing personal, right? I, I but don't. I'm just being strategic. I'm late, I gotta pick up my kids, I know where all this is going anyway, so we might as well just get, you know, get it over with, yeah. right? We have all these kinds of ways of explaining our own behaviors mm -hmm. that are very different from the, the ways that we attribute the behaviors of others. And what this does is it puts us in a constant cycle. Okay. So this is supposed to be a focus of the conversation we'll Absolutely. be having tomorrow. At the end Absolutely. of the day, how do you think that is going to contribute to the fight against corruption in Ghana? Yeah, so what we have to do, not just for Ghana, but mm -hmm. for everywhere, is we have to find a way to break this cycle right we have to that requires understanding the two sides of the transaction okay. understanding how we get into it initially right but then we want to look for a way to break it the way we've been talking about this in our conversation so far is that what we're really looking for is we're looking for a vaccination against mm. corruption hmm. right I mean you have a medical problem <laughs> you do medical research mm -hmm. you come up with a medical solution it's a vaccination this late is last a social night problem. this is a social problem we need a social vaccination right and in order to do that you have to understand the people who are involved and the circumstances that 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 they're that surround the fuel, them, right. the fuel that's that's around it some of this is going to be uh, the same across countries some of it's going to be special to Ghana Right? But you do, you're just not going to bring in somebody from the outside to say, this is the answer. Mm. If it were that simple, we'd have an answer already. Of course. Right? So we're yeah. here to start this conversation and have a very deep conversation around what kinds of things are okay and not okay. okay. How is it that we participate in some of these things that maybe are not okay? okay. How can we break that cycle internally? It's going to have to come from the, the bottom, bottom up. up. Yeah. That's true. Hopefully it does come from the bottom up uh, because I, I know a lot of people who are frustrated. I mean, they see the things going on, they know that this is not okay. Mm -hmm. And I know, I, you see, they say this is not okay. But some way, somehow, the system is uh, fashioned in a certain way that makes you, like you say, take a strategic position. 
and yeah. to get away with it. And at the end of the day, we're all in that corruption. Exactly. Um, um, if we all business. take our own strategic position, mm -hmm. then it's really easy to see how the whole thing keeps going. Yeah. So we need to figure out how to break that cycle. Hopefully this conversation will go a long way in helping uh, to do that. But just before we go, and, and I'm just going to put you on the spot, so just psych yourself up <laughs> sure. for it. The, what, what do you think? Did you hear about the Airbus scandal mm -hmm. that involved Ghana and other countries? Sure. What, what, are, what are your thoughts of that scandal? We have the same reactions that everybody else has, right? Whether it's whether it's Airbus uh, in Ghana or you know we could do a whole laundry list of, of other visible examples. The thing that's most shocking to us is not that it happens; it's that we actually get to view this thing that normally happens in, in hiding and mm -hmm. secret, and now it's out in the public yeah. space. But what I really struggle struggle what I what I work very hard to do in my research is to separate out the rhetoric of our response from a behavioral change. Mm. Completely understandable that we would be furious by yeah. that example or a million others that have been happening since the dawn of time, right? You know, the snake came into the garden. Know, right? yeah. <laughs> so it's been going on for a long time. Uh -huh. What we need to do is separate our feelings of outrage from the kinds of behavioral changes we're actually willing to make right. in the consequence of having that information. We owe a huge debt to investigative journalists, to researchers, to others who work hard to bring this kind of thing to light. Yeah. But now it's on us to actually make use of that information mm. to move forward. Because if we all get mad today and then tomorrow we just we'll have a tea on. and go to work and Back move to the on, cycle. Yeah, then well, all we've really done is guaranteed a, uh, a job for investigative journalists in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for coming through. Uh, Dr. Christopher Yankee, um, I don't know if you have any final words. Do you? If you don't, we can move on. Please join us uh, tomorrow. Uh, Youth Bridge Foundation. The website has all of the uh, the locations and times. We'll start at about, I believe it's uh, three thirty tomorrow afternoon at the British Auditorium. Okay. British Consul, British Consul Auditorium. You mean? I'm new to town. You're gonna have to <laughs> ask somebody else. Okay, that's I know British Consul. It certainly, most certainly, is British Consul, and it's starting at what? What's the website again? Uh, Youth Bridge Foundation. Youth Bridge mm -hmm. Foundation. So uh, just Google it. Youth Bridge Foundation, and if you want to join in that conversation, everybody's allowed to come. Absolutely. Look, Open I'm going to I'm going to speak for something like 30 to 45 minutes, but we have a couple hours set aside. A big emphasis for us is in the discussion that follows. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just here to plant some seeds, and then we have to figure out which one of these should should actually grow. Okay, so it's just a conversation. It's a conversation about corruption. How do we break the cycle? Like you said, let's see how it uh, it helps um, all of us. Dr. Christopher Yankee is assistant professor of international business at the University of South Carolina. Thank you uh, once again for coming. Thanks very much for having me.